would you feel if God sang a song over you? Hi, I'm Dr. Laverne Tolbert. Welcome to Sunday School Made Simple, the fastest growing online community of Christian education teachers and students of the Word. Thank you for joining us as we continue to explore the Word of God using the Precepts for Living commentary based on the Uniform Lesson Series. Remember to ring the bell at the bottom of this video to subscribe to our show so that you don't miss out on any new lessons. And as a teacher, why not be equipped so that your students don't merely download information but actually receive revelation? Subscribe to PreceptsForLivingOnline.com for complete lesson plans and additional resources. And when you do, you'll have access to precepts on your tablet, phone, or laptop. So go to PreceptsForLivingOnline.com and get your resources today. Each week, we make Sunday School simple with an easy-to-understand format. The text for you students of the Word and teaching tips for those of you who teach. Are you ready? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your righteousness and justice. We ask you to give us wisdom in Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're continuing the spring quarter entitled Justice and the Prophets, focusing on Old Testament prophets and God's justice. This final unit of lessons explores ways that people are called to God's work of justice through four biblical prophets. Today's lesson title is a vision of restoration, which explores the vision of Zephaniah giving hope for restoration and the end of injustice. Let's explore the text with our lesson aim. By the end of the lesson, we will discern the need for the just restoration of God's people, pursue trusting God for victory, hope, and renewal, and celebrate the return of joy and God's glory in salvation. Let's read our first set of verses from our scripture lesson in Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, and I'm reading in the New Living Translation. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart. O daughter of Jerusalem, for the Lord will remove his hand of judgment and will disperse the armies of your enemy. And the Lord himself, the King of Israel, will live among you. At last, your troubles will be over and you will never again fear disaster. What's important to know? There are two key points to know from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Zephaniah calls Israel to rejoice, and the Lord will reign in Israel again. Let's examine the background and context for this lesson. And you know, the background is in people, places, and times. So, in Zephaniah 1, we learn that he is a prophet during the reign of King Josiah. Zephaniah identifies his father as a Cushite or Ethiopian, descended from King Hezekiah. So we know that Zephaniah is an African Israelite prophet. King Josiah led a religious reform that focused on serving the Lord alone and removing all other religious relics, attire, and practices those idols. He got rid of all of that. And many scholars assume that Zephaniah prophesied before Josiah's reform, and perhaps even during the time that the king was a child. You can look for that reference in 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 1. Verse 1. According to Zephaniah, the day of the Lord is coming, and it is a day of judgment. God will judge the children of Israel for worshiping foreign gods and mixing worship of the Lord with other religious practices. And that background is in Zephaniah chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. God will judge the princes, judges, priests, and prophets who lie, oppress, and eagerly increase corruption, despite all 
of God's warnings, which are recorded in chapter 3, verses 3 through 7. God will judge the enemies of Israel, who at one time have oppressed them. God won't spare the wicked. They'll be cut off, ruined, and desolate. In the process, God is judging the whole earth. But there will be a remnant or a small group of humble people from near and far that God will bring together. This remnant will serve the Lord and they won't do any wrong. As Zephaniah chapter 3 begins, there is a shift from words of judgment to a prophecy of restoration. There's hope after the destruction. God's wrath is not the final word. God will give the people clean lips and all of God's scattered children will worship and serve the Lord on one accord. There'll be peace and they'll have nothing to fear. Oh my goodness. This vision of harmony and peace calls for the children of Israel to rejoice in the Lord's work. There is a clear reminder that despite the human king, the Lord himself is the true king of Israel. He is strong and mighty and has given them victory over their enemies. The Lord has removed the judgments against them and come to dwell among them. The next set of verses for this lesson are from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 16 through 18, and again in the New Living Translation. On that day, the announcement to Jerusalem will be, Cheer up, Zion! Don't be afraid, for the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness, and with his love he will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. I will gather you who mourn for the appointed festivals. You will be disgraced no more. Well, there are, oops, I have three keys here. Two keys, <laughs> two key points from the verses in, these, in this lesson. God's love restores Israel and the Lord sings over Israel. Isn't that beautiful? God's love restores the souls of the Israelites. It's important to note here that Israel refers to the children of Israel in the northern kingdom of Judah, which has been conquered. In these verses, Zephaniah declares that there is a new day. And the new day is pictured with God as a warrior king bringing victory to his people. The Lord has returned to his people, and because of his presence, there's joy and peace. The Israelites had undergone distress, anguish, and bitter cries. And we read that in Zephaniah chapter 1, verses 14 through 15. As they dwelt in exile in Babylon. But now is the day of God's singing. Instead of feeling rejected by God, Israel will know they are loved by God, and God is delighted in Israel. The Lord will calm all of Israel's fears during the day of the Lord. And those who are mourning for the festivals of the Lord, they won't be ashamed anymore. In other words, the faithful, those who actually cared about the laws of God, will see their faith come to fruition. Their belief in God's redemption is not vain, because God will perform what he said in his word. Well, let's read the last set of verses for this lesson. That's from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 19 and 20, again in the New Living Translation. And I will deal severely with all who have oppressed you. I will save the weak and helpless ones. I will bring together those who were chased away. I will give glory and fame to my former exiles wherever they have been mocked and shamed. On that day, I will gather you together and bring you home again. I will give you a good name, a name of distinction among all the nations of the earth as I restore your fortunes before your very eyes. I, the Lord, have spoken. There is one key point from these verses in the lesson. 
God will restore the remnant's social standing. In these final verses, we're reminded that God's restoration is complete. It's holistic in a sense. While the previous verses deal with the remnant's spiritual, emotional, and mental wellness, these verses address their social location. In other words, they've been oppressed, cast away, and robbed of their fortune. They didn't get to experience whatever goodness came with their identity. Instead, they were mocked and shamed. Because of their social location, they were treated as inferior. But God promises to do more than remove their oppressors. God promises to bring the remnant together, to give them a good name, and to restore their fortunes. In this final vision, the remnant have everything they need. They have an identity, and they have a community of gathered people. They are full socially because those who were not able to help themselves are in God's care, and they have full access to their fortunes. What a beautiful lesson of restoration, and that's what's important to know from today's lesson. What's important to feel? It's important to feel relieved. <laughs> This quarter, we've heard a lot about God's judgment of wickedness, sin, and overall unrighteousness. We've been challenged and encouraged that God will keep promises to punish those who commit injustice. But we can find relief in this lesson today that the Lord will also give restoration to those who survive after destruction. In other words, there's a rainbow after the rain. God gave Zephaniah a glorious vision of redemption physically, emotionally, mentally, and socially for Israel. We know that the ultimate fulfillment of this vision will be when Jesus Christ returns to fully establish his kingdom. And we can be relieved that the judgment and punishment are not the end of everything for us as believers, but a step in God's plan of redemption for all of creation. That's what's important to feel. What should we do in response to today's lesson? We should celebrate God's redemption. It doesn't get any more simple than that. We've already experienced the Lord's redemption in more ways than we can explain through the blood of Jesus Christ. We've experienced the taste of eternal life and God's kingdom through the power of the Holy Spirit. We should celebrate God's work in our lives and the promise of justice. We don't have to wait till we fully see justice and restoration on the earth for us to celebrate. We can celebrate God's promise now because we know by faith God will perform what he says in due time. That's our text for today. Now let's talk about how to effectively teach this lesson. Don't forget to pray. Pray that your students will have receptive hearts and minds to be obedient to God's word, that you'll be creative and use a variety of methods to help your students understand, and pray that your students will apply what they learn to their lives. Now, hook or open this lesson by asking students to identify how they respond to God when God blesses them in new and unexpected ways. Or download the InFocus video from PreceptsForLivingOnline.com and answer the following question at the end. How do you celebrate? your blessings from God. What a great discussion that'll be. And then transition into book or present the scriptures. Before students read the scriptures, may I suggest this, two things. Number one, we ask students to turn in their Bibles and we do want them to, teacher, you should always have a Bible open, but as students are looking for the lessons, they're looking for the scriptures, sometimes they're looking in there phones or their tablets, or they actually have a paper Bible, a physical Bible. Make sure that the reading doesn't begin until everyone has found the text. It's very discouraging for students, especially children, if they have a Bible and they're looking for the text and the reading begins before they found it. So we used to say, wait till you don't hear any papers turning, any pages turning before start reading. And now we're like, when you see fingers scrolling, just wait till all the scrolling has ended before the scripture is read. 
Secondly, review the people, places, and times. This background is important for a better understanding of the lesson. And then invite volunteers to read the entire portion of scriptures. Ask them what stood out or resonated with you from the verses. Get them talking and engaged in your lesson. And then read the in-depth paragraphs which explain the scriptures. For children, why not have several joyful songs they can sing that tell them of God's love as you explain that God always helps his people. And then transition into look or explore the meaning. Ask the entire class to close their eyes and imagine God singing over them. What would cause the Lord to sing today? Good question, hmm? And now transition into took or next step for application. Invite a volunteer to read Liberating Lesson and the application for activation. And ask students to write down their reflections as they listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to them. And then end the class with a song. <laughs> Enjoy your lesson this week. And now let's talk mailbag. And welcome to Mailbag. And again, we have with us Minister Alan Reynolds, who is a theologian, writer, husband, father, songwriter, youth minister. Oh my goodness, I don't know what are the titles we can add to what he, what he does for the work of the Lord. We just so appreciate his wisdom as he answers questions here. And today, Alan, millennials like to be called they don't want all the titles, but to us <laughs> older folks, we, we will be offended if we don't have all the titles. <laughs> so, only because it's a matter of respect and all that stuff. But So, what song would you sing in response to how God is moving in your life? This is such a beautiful picture that we, we just studied this mm. lesson about Zephaniah and God singing over his people. Yeah. And if you were going to sing a song, what would it be? So I'm raised in a church uh, that had an award-winning choir. Uh-oh. And <laughs> they had this song that they sang that actually uh, came out, wow, uh, maybe 2000, called Praise Is What I Do. Ooh. And uh, that song really is the song, I mean, that, that really helped me so much through those times because one of the things that uh, the, the singer says in it is that he vows to praise God in the good and the bad, mm -hmm. you know, whether happy or sad. And for me, that's what it means to be faithful, right? Faith yes. is not just about believing in God, but it's holding on to God regardless of what's going on and recognizing that we have that bigger purpose to give God praise in everything that we do. So that I was going really to ask to you to sing a portion of it. <laughs> <laughs> I hear uh, you sing. I know you sing. <laughs> I do enjoy singing. Um, that is way out of my range, but I'll, I'll sing. I'll sing it in a range that I can. And it, that that part is, I vow to praise you through the good and the bad. I'll praise you. Whether happy or sad, I'll praise you in all that I go through. Because praise is what I do. Because I owe it all to you. We're going to have a praise party up in here. Oh, my goodness. Feel the Holy Spirit. Yeah. God is so wonderful. Have a great class. Sing, praise, rejoice. God bless you. Oh, wait. We're going to read our Keep in Mind verses yes. before we let you go. Okay, so just one more moment. All right. All right. <laughs> and it says in Zephaniah 3.19, and I will deal severely with all those who have oppressed you. I will save the weak and helpless ones. I will bring together those who were chased away. I will give glory and fame to my former exiles whenever they have been mocked and shamed, wherever they have been mocked and shamed. God is gonna set it all straight. Don't worry about a thing. God sees. God bless you, have a great week. <laughs>